I'm calling this video a spreadsheet lab, which means in the description to this video is a link to a spreadsheet that you can do yourself. Before you do that, it might be a good idea to watch the video on simple harmonic motion because I developed equations that would predict the position, the velocity, and the acceleration of an object moving in simple harmonic motion. And we developed this equation for the position as a function of time. Also, if you haven't done spreadsheets before, I do have a video that gives you an introduction to spreadsheets, and there's some important techniques to learn um, maybe before you attempt this spreadsheet. But one thing about simple harmonic motion is that this mass bobbing up and down on the spring seems to correlate with the, whole, the vertical position of this ball going in a circle. And we developed that equation in the previous video, but what we want to do in this spreadsheet is to see if it really does correlate. So here's the spreadsheet. I'm not going to say a lot about it because I want to have you work through it yourself. But there's three things we're going to do. I had a mass bobbing up and down on the spring here and a sonic ranger that would measure the position 50 times every second. And it was able to graph it on my computer there. And this is the data of position as a function of time. But when we hit collect on the sonic ranger, the mass was just bobbing up and down and it may not have been right at its maximum amplitude the moment we hit collect. So we need to find that first maximum and subtract all the data points down here uh, so that it starts at its maximum just like the cosine uh, function does. And then because our mass was bobbing up and down some distance from the sonic ranger, we got to move that data down so that it oscillates equally above and below the x-axis. To do that, we just need to move the equilibrium position down to zero. And don't guess and check at that. You can uh, think about it carefully. So every one of these numbers here has to have subtracted from it this value. And you could type in a formula that takes this minus this and this minus this and this minus that. But there's 270 some data points here. And one of the general principles of a spreadsheet is if you're doing something, you think this is stupid, there has got to be a better way. There's a better way. So what we're going to do is type in a formula that takes what is in this cell here and subtracts this number there. So what's in cell A19, and we're going to subtract what's in this cell, which was D14. But notice I put dollar signs there. Putting a dollar sign in front of the 14 holds that cell right at row 14. So if I were to copy that cell down one, this would update and now say A20, but this would still say D14 because it was frozen right there. The other thing we need to do is that would be that would just get this down to here, but now we need to play with the function x equals a cosine of 2 pi ft. We got to get the amplitude right and we got to get the frequency right. And again, you don't have to guess and check at these. You can look at the original data and determine the amplitude, and you can also look at the original data and determine the period, and knowing the period, you can calculate the frequency. So this spreadsheet gives you a good practice with knowing what amplitude is, what the relationship between period and frequency, and then also being able to actually see if this equation nicely models the data that we actually collected. So good luck on your spreadsheet.